What's up, everyone? Thank you for checking out and supporting this episode of Raised a Geek. This week, we talk about the original Twister from 1996. Does it hold up? Does it make us want to see Twisters? Let's find out. I'm Chris, and as always, I'm here with my buddies, Don and Tony. How are we doing, guys? Chris, what is up today, my friend and Tony, my other friend? Just uh, enjoying the weekend on this Sunday, this holiday weekend. I think last time we did this show together a few weeks ago, it was an, was it a holiday? No. Was it Memorial Day? It was Maybe. Memorial Day. Yeah. Okay. So this is just like a holiday thing we're doing here. Get together on the holidays. Uh, Say holiday one more time. <laughs> holiday, holiday, holiday. Uh, so happy Fourth of July weekend to you guys. Did you do anything? Yeah, I don't know. There's some fireworks around the neighborhood. Caught a little bit of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a dog. Dog. The older I get, the less I like fireworks. And as a dog owner, I'm just kind of like, eh, this is messed up. You're he's he's going through trauma right now. Well, right, well, right. I don't know. Yeah. I used to I used to do all the stuff like, you know, when we go out and take a blanket out to wherever the the city is doing their fireworks show. Now it's just like, hmm, no, too many bugs. Yeah, too many. I live- I live in the city, so it's just kind of a pain. Like, if you want to go anywhere and like be officially there, you have to drop money. Like, I was looking up uh, different types of parades or fireworks things at different stadiums, and they were like, "Oh, go to Ticketmaster and get your tickets." And I'm like, "What?" And then it was like two tickets. It was like sixty bucks. I'm like, "Yeah, no, I'm not doing that." Otherwise, I can go to like sit on the side of a highway to see fireworks. It's just a pain in the ass. Yeah, but like you said, now, now though, like you said, some neighbors just light some stuff off and you can kind of just yeah. go out and see what stupid shit they bought and whatever but it was fun though it's always fun pretty low-key which is how i like it and then i watched twister because i knew we were talking about it i also watched twister this week get out you guys of here. did when was the last time you saw twister before this time because for me it, it's been like I, it's got to be a decade it's just not a movie i go to you know what i mean uh it's one i know i saw many times in the 90s when it came out like twister it's a blockbuster but like haven't thought about it for years and the reason we are doing this show is because twisters is a thing like what's that 30 years after the first one uh they're getting getting to a do you want to call it a sequel or a reboot i'm not i have no idea what it is yeah like they they gave it the sequel s Mm-hmm. Like they like to do like uh, aliens and predators and I keep wanting to say Rambo's, but no, that's not a thing. Oh my uh, god, there's two of them. <laughs> there's two of them. Uh, Chris, uh, I think you're onto something. Yeah, I want I want to see Rambo's. We oh, talked. Rambos. I know when we talked about our acolyte epi- episode and we talked about people playing twins, one actor playing twins, and we said how horrible that is. But if we had two Stallones going Rambo. Rambo in the woods. I think I'd be down. What do you that. mean? What do you mean? There's another one of me out here. <laughs> Brian Dennehy just freaking out because now there's two of them. <laughs> there's two Rambo's. Not I gotta deal with two of you. I need another chopper in the air. <laughs> uh, this, all, this also leads me to wonder: Are we gonna start getting stuff like Armageddon's? <laughs> is, is Con Air's coming? There's two Face offs coming for the Earth. Face-offs. Speeds. <laughs> Speeds. Speeds. You got two bosses racing each other <laughs> on either side. Not two. Just throw an S. That's how all sequels two. should be. No matter how ridiculous it is, you just throw a C- S at the end, and here we go. I got two wildcats. <laughs> <laughs> two Dennis Hoppers. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, but anyway, I think I think that would be great. I don't remember what you asked. Um, last time I saw Twister, honestly, I feel like I've seen the beginning of this movie quite a few times over the years. Um, been a long time since I actually got past the halfway point, um, past the visit to Aunt May's. I always see like I see that part and then I stop watching. I don't know why. Yeah, I feel like Is I have right? the opposite. I haven't. I don't think I've seen the opening in twenty something years. But every now and then, flipping through TV or something, you'll catch like five or ten minutes of it where it's yeah. either mid- midway through or getting closer to the end. We're at the point where they're already on the road or something. But, yeah, I, I haven't watched it in its entirety in, you know, probably 20, 25 years. Yeah. So it's just one of the, we'll, we'll get into it, but it's just one of those movies that just feels from that certain era of when. Yeah. Yeah, summer blockbusters were a bigger thing than they tend to be now. Like movies are thought of differently, but movies back then were like, ah, oh, the whole world has gone to see Titanic. The whole world has gone right. to see 
Men in Black, the whole world has gone to see Twister. It's just like it fits in there. It was like 94 to 97, 98, Mm -hmm. somewhere in there where you just had those movies. It was like Jurassic Park Mm -hmm. in like 93. And then it just kind of always seemed like every summer up until about 98, you know, Armageddon, where you talked about, had just those types of movies. That was probably our prime, like growing up years. So we were all excited. Like, I remember going to see Armageddon at the movie theater. I remember seeing Twister, but I also remember seeing Twister because I saw it at a drive-in in in a storm. So that was was you. I couldn't remember which one of our friends saw it in a drive-thru, in a drive-in when there was a storm going on. And then I remember thinking as a kid, it's like, but there's a drive-in scene in the movie. How scared (laughs) were you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, a little. I, I remember like my sister and I were sitting outside of the car. And we're watching the movie. And when the movie started, you know how they had like the Warner Brothers logo and it was like a storm clouds in the background. Like it, the whole screen matched the sky. And we're like, uh-oh. And then <laughs> uh, when the first storm shows up, this giant gust of wind came. And my we had a blanket. My sister and I were sharing a blanket. And that went flying. And we're like, no. <laughs> we're like chasing <laughs> we're our blanket. It. The blanket, the, the blanket is like hitting other cars. And we're chasing the blanket down. And then we grabbed the blanket. And we had to like get in the car because it started raining. So I watched that whole movie for the first time with windshield wipers on in the rain. It's awesome. So drive, drive, Drive-ins are a different kind of thing. They don't We don't really do that anymore. But that was some crazy times. Drive-ins, that was always a fun, drive-ins were always fun, and that's probably where this movie has, like, a weird nostalgic thing to me, just because of, like, the time frame, like I said, 96, you're just kind of, like, at that age, getting ready to go to high school, getting ready to be a high schooler, I don't know why I made my voice that high, but (laughs) that's that's what we sounded like, Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a minute, usually, as Tony said, I've watched it like in pieces if i see it it's one of those ones that if i see it it's kind of like battleship if i see it's on <laughs> just remember rihanna with those guns and then saying boom or something that's all <laughs> i remember from that movie but if i'm flipping and it's on tnt i'm watching it at least until the next commercial tony you haven't been a part of all these shows i just want to make note that that's about the 10th time chris has referenced battleship hey, about it's a, it's at least the 15th i'm also a listener not just a guest occasionally <laughs> yeah. I he, is, and uh, yes, it, it's it seems like a theme. Yeah, I, it's, it's uh, like yeah, just like kind of like when I saw Battleship. It's like what well, you love Battleship. <laughs> Wait, is there a, a, a Skarsgård in that or? Uh, yeah, the know. the Alexander Skarsgård was in that. So Eric was Gordon. uh the guy um, who played John Carter. I can't remember his name. He was on Friday yeah, Night Lights. Yeah, I always thought that dude was gonna be like a huge star, like. That's when I thought like uh, League of, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was going to be good. He was in that. He like no, that was a different. That was a. Di- it's not the same different- guy. I don't think those are the same guy. Oh my god. Um, I, I can't remember his name, but movie? he's been in a lot of stuff. Um, but I don't have his name off the top of my head because I wasn't planning on talking about. Well, you said that. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> the tangents. The tan Taylor Kitsch. Oh, Gambit. Oh, God, yeah, he was Gambit. Oh, God, I am mixing him up with another dude. Taylor mm. Kitsch was good in that. Uh, he was, like, the only good thing of uh, season two of True Detective. I was going to say he was in that, yeah. He was he awesome. Was like, like, he was great. He's always yeah. great. Yeah, he's good. I did mix him up with somebody else who I thought was in that movie. So, yeah. Mm. But, Kitsch. yeah, when I watch it on TV, we're here to talk about Twister, not Taylor Kitsch. Twister. He was in Twister. We would be there. So let me give, for those who might not know, anybody out there who may have never seen Twister, knows Twister's coming out, maybe you weren't born, maybe you just didn't see it for whatever reason over the years. Twister is about two storm chasers on the brink of divorce who must work together to create an advanced weather alert system by putting themselves in the crosshairs of extremely violent tornadoes. Mm -hmm. Tell me that's not a synopsis for a movie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Twister, the the Twisters in this movie are basically the, they're like holding the place of monsters. This is a monster movie Mm -hmm. that just is, instead of a giant Godzilla or a giant King Kong, it's just constant tornadoes. Like, this is the... They come and go at will. Yeah, just just pop in and appear in about this, like, you know, 25-mile radius. This is like... A terrible time for this area having about 10 tornadoes all happening just uh i don't even know if the the 
characters in this movie even ever slept. Uh, if it was just like one 24 hour period of hell on earth, they said like, it in the beginning. Yeah. They said it in the beginning when the weather people that you never saw again said it's going to be a crazy day. And then they played the happy music and showed the trucks. The driving. craziest. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah. we're never seen storms like this back to back to back in 30 years. Yeah. They explained it as a freak weather phenomenon mm-hmm. that they were going to cash in on with their science and their equipment. And they're chasing yeah. storms and then just seem to be happy that they survived. So the first like two storms that they chased, they seemed like they were just like, did you see what happened? Like they didn't even try to do anything. It was just like they got themselves in trouble. Then they survived and everyone was happy. And I was like, wait, you didn't do any science. <laughs> Did no science. They absolutely ruined a truck, almost died, and then they were like, "Hey, Bill Paxton, we're gonna need that truck." <laughs> they just took Uh-oh. off his truck. Well, b- yeah. before before we talk about how we feel about it now, I, like, do you tr- do you remember? I mean, our tastes have obviously changed over the past however many years. How you critically think about movies? Do you remember back when you saw it? Back when it was a new movie, what you thought about it? It was awesome in the nineties as a kid. It was mm-hmm. it was fun and exciting and scary and yeah, it was it was huge. Great. Like you talk you, about it, you talk about it now where it's like, oh, you I don't know. I think I'm more jaded as an adult and I expect more out of movies now. And there's it's it's also fun to look back and be like, oh my god, it's pretty cheesy that this happened. But mm-hmm. like at the time, it's it was awesome. And there's yeah. still even parts of it where I was like, yeah, like what, Jess and I just rewatched this two nights ago. And she was like, I still get chills after that scene. And I'm like, yeah, good for you. She fucking loves this movie. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah. She's not as jaded as I am, you know? So it's yeah. just like, yeah. But yeah, at the time, it was a blast. But it, mm-hmm. it it also has one of those feelings with like the like the ensemble, the cast, and like all those characters almost seem like fun. Yeah. And like like you know them. So you're just like on an adventure with them. And you're just like, yeah, look at, look at, look at Dusty. Ha ha. And you're just like immediately just kind of feel like you're part of this group. And I don't, I don't feel that in a lot of movies nowadays. Like they never feel like they flesh out the characters that much. And not that the characters were fleshed out, but it's just, it had like a, a whole movie had just kind of like a fun vibe. That even watching it today, but definitely, like I said, as a kid, it was just, it was ridiculous. We didn't get movies like this when this was, this was, like you said, the epitome of a blockbuster on top of just like the special effects that were just starting. Like this was when special effects were just becoming a thing. So you were just like, computers. Oh, dude, the (laughs) uh, storms are real. The opening credit sequence or uh, for the font they did just to say Twister and then how all the letters got ripped off. And I was like, it's so 90s CGI. Like, yeah. it's so like, but for the time, it was it was exciting. I, I think it still holds up with certain things. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know. It's easy to yeah. watch something where you're just like, ah, just, uh, I'm going to shit on this a little bit. You know, it's a little fun to do. But at the same time, it's like, for the time, yeah, it was, I, I loved it as a kid. No, what definitely. You Definitely, you look at movies differently now, obviously, like you're talking about. So watching this, uh, of course, I'm laughing and picking apart things that I wasn't back then because I wasn't thinking like that. But now, like you said, I'm a little older, a little jaded, a little more like sarcastic about things. So it's like, oh, that's fucking stupid. And we'll talk (laughs) about it. But like watching it at the time. Yeah, it's just felt like a big I used to feel different about movies back then back then i don't know just like that 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 whole blockbuster era it was just fun to be a part of it and so twister was one of those big ones where just like everyone's talking about this movie it's so fun stuff's blowing ever everybody loves the cows everyone wants to talk about the cows blowing around and uh it just felt different so yeah i mean wearing t-shirts that says we got cows (laughs) yeah Yeah, but dude i can remember when i saw that when i was a kid it was just like it was so fun you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like and yeah. it was the, it was also the it thing at the time, and it was the, that's still around the times of like water cooler talk. And it was like, hey, did you see that yet? You were super excited and to, to go ahead and talk to somebody about Twister because you finally saw it opening weekend, or you you know you finally went and saw it. So uh, it's just it's different now. Yeah, like like I said, just we we look at movies differently. It was just a different time. Like I haven't felt a blockbuster feel excitement like in the '90s since probably. I don't know. 
I mean, Infinity War and Endgame kind of made me feel that way, like an event thing. Everybody has to go see. This is a community thing. We're all watching this together and talking about it and enjoying it. But like since then, I haven't really had that feeling. So watching this even now, like those nostalgic feelings of, man, 90s awesome shit, even though it's fucking not going to it didn't win any Oscars and the story is very simple and the dialogue might be stupid, but it's just it's Twister, though, you know? Yeah, and like you said, I think it might just be coming from being older and more jaded. But like, even when I get hyped up, because I get hyped pretty easily um, for things. But even when I do, then I'm just like, oh, I got to see this movie, and then I see it, I'm saying it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I I still never have like you know finished it, and I'm like, holy shit! Um, I can't say never, but not to this level that this like made you feel. Like, there's sometimes I'm just like, man, that was a really good movie, but it's still just not fun always Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think one of the last times like i left a theater like oh my gosh oh my gosh was probably the first guardians maybe like i was genuinely like happy Mm -hmm. and satisfied afterwards walking out of it like that's everything i wanted and and, and expected you know what i mean but um i don't know i think i think our as adults and being jaded our expectations are just too high and like very rarely you're gonna get a perfect movie where you're like from front start to finish you're just totally happy with it Right, yeah. Which, you know, that's terrible for us because why well, don't well, we just sit back and enjoy it? It's uh, hard. It's harder. It's harder now. It is. Yeah. I, I find and it I don't harder. Think that's everyone. I think that's some people. <laughs> I think some people can watch a movie and be like, it was absolutely awesome. And like, I'm a little jealous of those people. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I want to I wanna love nine yeah. out of the 10 movies I see. I don't want to pick them apart, but I don't right. know. I discovered yeah. that getting on Letterboxd. And started like logging my movies so I would know what I watched throughout the year. And then I read the reviews after I watch a movie and just see what other people think. And you see that you see that complete variation. You'll see a bunch of like hearts and five stars and like, oh my God, this movie's amazing. And then you have the one star like dumpster fire. And you're just like, you know, I might not be extreme one way or another, but I've been trying to since I've been reading those and seeing that, I've been trying to think more on like, okay being a little bit more generous with my four and five stars and trying to really be like, okay, I had fun watching this movie yeah. and trying to find the fun in movies again. And then when you go back and watch something like Twister, you're just like, man, that was a fun movie. Yes, as Don said, I'm, I'm going to pick it apart and I'm going <laughs> to make fun of it. But it's still... Not it's not fun. every not every movie has to be the best thing you've ever seen for right. it still to be you know enjoyable. Enjoy it. So you have to kind of separate that and not be like you're not roger ebert every movie you go into and it has to like meet your expectations yeah. on a 100 percent level you know it it's not like i get done with a movie and i'm like i want my two hours back what a way i very rarely does that happen it's not like i'm just upset that while i'm watching it if that's the case i'll turn it off but like like what i said about roadhouse 2024 <laughs> <laughs> it had its moments done no <laughs> uh well uh, this was better than roadhouse I'll yes give it agreed. this was better than roadhouse <laughs> yeah yeah definitely 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 um so how we want to talk about twist you know i want to I, I didn't know how you guys would do this so just in case it doesn't get glazed over if we just jump into because we kind of did before but i want to say that you said that you've seen the opening a bunch and i don't think i've seen it for like 20 years so i was watching the opening scene it was scary. It was a scary opening scene. And I'm like, I watched this as a kid. I can remember it being scary. So like it's it scared me. And then I was worried about the dog the whole time. Cause oh, yeah. you know, I care more about dogs than I do about humans. So I'm freaking out about the dog. I'm like, if, cause I couldn't remember. I'm like, mm-hmm. if they don't let that dog in, <laughs> so they let the dog in, right? In the nineties, like the dog was always saved. Yeah, that you're right. It's before they started crushing our souls with Yeah, uh, that's a that's a relatively new thing where we're sure. we're, we're right. okay. Like that's how we get sympathy. We don't worry about killing the the people, but it's like, oh, they killed the dog. Now I'm emotionally invested. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh yeah, so they they get the dog in there and like the dad's doing the dad thing and he's trying to hold on. Even though he says he can't repeatedly. I can't hold on then yeah. then get back. <laughs> and it's like, then get back to where you'll be safe and it won't make a difference. So, like, that was one thing that, that, but like, when the eye of the storm, the core, whatever they call it, is, is like right over them and she's kind of like looking out through the window, there's this cut, cut to the dog looking up and just smiling. And it's like, <laughs> it sounds like a monster and a freight train are outside. And this dog just thinks that he could just, ah, it's just smiling up 
at the camera and I was dying laughing, man. I was like, oh, that I went from scared to who left this part in with this dog <laughs> smiling to then the that dad fucked out where if the dad yeah. would have just let go before and stayed in, he'd been fine. Well, yeah. that's that's the biggest thing. My first takeaway from this film is there is no movie without that dad dying, but the dad dying is stupid because yeah. <laughs> he did not have to die. He's holding the door closed. He's holding the door closed because he feels like he needs to. It sucks him out. But the mom and Joe and the dog are in the back of the storm cellar and they live. The door has gone. Yeah. So meaning they still lived with the door being gone. Yep. That would have been fun. <laughs> All he had to do was stay in the back with them. Be like, Get away from that door, everybody. Ah, the end. No movie. We lost our house. That, mean, that means she spent her entire life obsessed mm -hmm. with storms because they took her dad, not thinking about the fact that, why didn't dad just hang out back by us? Sure. I feel yeah, like I would have right. spent my whole life just being like my dad, you know, hey, what, 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 tell me about your dad. Oh, he's an idiot. <laughs> he kept telling me he couldn't hold this door shut, but he kept trying. And then we just, to. we just. Yeah, he didn't have to. If he would have just come hung out in the corner with us, we would have been okay. Even the dog is 10 pounds and it didn't get sucked out. So, you know. Yeah. Like that. But she focused on the storm. I need to see it. Yeah. So uh, her dad got trapped in the suck zone. You know what I mean? It's just, uh... I mean, when they did show him getting sucked out, though, that was kind of like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. Scary. <laughs> like he, he was, he was just gone. And I was like, Oh no. Yeah. It was messed up. I, dude, I, I had no memory of how that scene went. So like, it was scary to watch again. It was like, Holy crap. No, you it know. was a hell of a way to open a movie. And I, sure. I remember, like you said, how I feel felt watching it as a kid and all of those things that you just don't have with a lot of, a lot of movies, that nostalgia aspect of it. So it definitely still was shocking, but you're looking at it with adult eyes and you're just like, why the hell was he holding on to the door? <laughs> It didn't have to happen. Yeah, it didn't uh, have to happen. Okay. And then they literally like just cut to the like, happy music playing as we're like, dun, 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 dun. We're, like, <laughs> here's the, here's the, you know, here's Bill Paxton showing up uh, to the, to the uh, shanty park. 30 years later. Yeah. 30 uh, years later, we're just like, yeah, Bill Paxton's here. Then it kind of, so yeah, after that opening, it does go into the future. And we are introduced to Bill Paxton, Paxton and his girlfriend or fiance, whatever you want to call her. And then it's basically just like they throw the whole cast pretty much at you. Oh, yeah. Just watch, watching this, I'd forgotten how many people like that you recognize from other places are in this. Like it's oh, yeah. just like a parade of fucking recognizable faces. I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio sitting there pointing at the screen like, I know that person. <laughs> yeah. Just like, dude, I forgot Alan Ruck was in it. I mean, I I probably did know he was in it but then like jeremy davies i was just like where are all these dudes like Dude, it's it was, just a parade it was, of dudes it was this great just like supply of 90s character actors from yeah. like different sitcoms and movies at the time where it was like you watch it now it's like this cast is loaded yeah <laughs> it's stacked even having yeah. philip seymour hoffman as like a nobody as, as dusty he was a nobody at the time but now you're looking at him and you're like man that's philip seymour hoffman who's you know turns into how many of them turn into things like they were nothing then but how mm -hmm. many of them are things now or were became things right um so yeah it's it's character actors at the time but then there were some legit actors in there too even yeah. alan ruck you know i mean he was from ferris bueller to begin with but that was kind of in the 90s when he was trying to like get rid of cameron so he now now when i look like at him that. I now when I look at him, I just see Connor from Succession. Yep, for that's sure. like that's who I think of. Yeah, yeah, like even even uh, who else? Well, like I said, Jeremy Davies. I just like I see him and I think God of War is like my thing for him. But having him pop up in things, he was on Lost, a couple that's different I, things. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, dude. Just like a lot of people, even people. There's some in that cast who I don't even know their name, but I just know their face. Mm -hmm. you know a lot of stuff like that yep. uh, and then obviously starring helen hunt and she was huge in the 90s like with mad about you and stuff did anyone else think her career was going to kind of take off in a different way and it never fully did like she was in obviously twister probably her biggest leading role i, th I would think but like she was in that one tom hanks movie as his wife uh cast away a couple right. different other things than one she was in Oh yeah, okay. That, which one? That, 
I thought was going to reprise her. Like I thought she was going to get big again after that. Which yeah. one? Uh, her and Jack Nicholson. The like uh, something's got to give. Or that was that, in, that was also in the nineties with like Greg Kinnear and Helen Hunt and Meryl Streep or something. Yeah, yeah. The Jack Nicholson one. She did a lot of those kind of like adult rom coms. Mm-hmm. Sure. In the '90s, but yeah, she never, she didn't make it out of the '90s too well. No, and I, I kind of always looked at her and thought of her as—I don't know why—I always looked at her as like a poor, poor man's Jodie Foster. <laughs> I don't know. That was just like my way of thinking. Not even just because they kind of look similar, but just like ah, we couldn't get Jodie Foster. Let's get Helen Hunt. Uh, but like, I don't know. I kind of always thought she would keep going, 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 and it just kind of stalled out for her. But she's good, like in this movie. Yeah, she did What Women Want in 2000, and then after that, it was just like direct-to-video TV What's the movies. last thing she did, the most recent thing? Um, Most recent thing she did was Hacks. She did three episodes of Hacks on Max. Okay. She's done a lot of episodes of things. It seemed like Mad About, Mad About You was on until... No, that can't be right. It was on 1992 to, to 2019. That's not right. No, it, it probably had a reboot season. Oh it, yeah, they like to they it, like to do that. They did a Mad About You reboot. No, I don't know. I don't know. Every time I think about Mad About You, I just think about the fact that it was in the same universe as Friends. It's, it's very weird. <laughs> yeah, it was. Because Ursula, Phoebe's sister, existed on both. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 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 uh anyway uh, anyway but yes i agree with you for like she was really big in the 90s and then just disappeared yeah at least off the mainstream yeah, but for sure. like a 90, 90s cast you know yeah 90s cast she was big and of course bill paxton and stuff do you guys find something soothing about him like his voice <laughs> i don't know why uh just when bill paxton is talking it just seems mellow i don't know Maybe it's because I liked Big Love a lot, and that's what I kind of think of him mostly as. Uh, I don't know. I always enjoy a Bill Paxton vehicle. Sure. I mean, yeah, I got no problem with Bill Paxton. No. Just uh, I think about him from Aliens and Predator 2. When I think about him first, I think. This is the first thing that popped in my head. What was that movie he was in with uh, Matthew McConaughey, where it was like the... Royalty. Oh yeah, that was a good yep. movie. That's probably one of his best things. That he was. directed that one too. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, Bill R. Paxton. R. R. Yeah, Bill Paxton was a treasure. Whenever he popped up and stuff, I always remember him from True Lies. He was in that one yeah, with Schwarzenegger. He was hilarious in True Lies. Yeah, he was pretending to be the secret agent. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to sleep with Jamie Lee Curtis. What? There yeah. it is. I. I owned that movie for a while, and I borrowed it to someone, and they never gave it back. I don't know, but anyway, the the cast in this movie is, like we said, stacked, and just, it was fun to kind of see everybody and uh, yeah. remember, like, oh, yeah, man, big ensemble, everything. A lot of, a lot of white people. I don't know, but... um, The 90s. Not a lot of minorities in the 90s, <laughs> uh, in the 90s blockbusters, but... uh. I'm going to Google 90s Storm Chasers and try to figure out what demographics they've got going on there. <laughs> yeah. But Harry Elways, we didn't even say him. He's like pops oh, yeah. in as the... I the, think he was like third billing. Yeah. So it was fun to see him too. I yeah. don't know. Just a impressive cast and kind of kicked us off into the movie. What did you see? Like, what did you view differently now? Like we said we were going to... Like, what did your adult eyes notice about this movie that you didn't catch as a kid? Anything stand out? Um, man, it's throughout the whole movie. So, I've, but like, uh, some of the dialogue for the storm chasing jargon, like the verbiage they used, mm-hmm. cracked me up through the whole thing. And as a kid, I know I thought it was cool, <laughs> but now when it's like, oh god, we're in the core, and it was just like I was, I was like dying. Hold on, I wrote one of them down. Okay. And it's like, it's like, it's like, look at the updraft. It's going to shift. Oh yeah. It's definitely a sidewinder. And I was like, <laughs> I was cracking up at some of the dialogue, but as a kid, I know I was like, they've got a sidewinder. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, 
Like it, it was fun to watch it and pick it apart a little bit, but it's yeah, there was definitely a clear difference of like my little mind being blown as a kid and it being really cool and me and as an adult being like, Holy crap, this is hilarious. Like all that she's so gonna shift. She's gonna shift. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Bill Bill Paxton who can like read storms he's like the storm whisperer and he just knows he just like holds some yeah. dirt and he's just like <laughs> oh my god go. he picked it up and just like let it <laughs> i literally have a note that says bill paxton grabbing dirt is hilarious because it was he he knew what was gonna happen by that but it didn't even seem like, like same kind of one guy. thing if they like they he dropped the dirt and you saw it move like a little but not nearly enough to be like it just seemed like almost just holding the dirt he was like i'm one with the with the mother nature now i could feel what she's going to do yeah the dirt's mm-hmm. telling me the storm is going the other way and he just dropped it uh, dude there was another line and he was like we're in the core oh we got sisters we're in the flanking line <laughs> and like when they split into two it was like yeah. Dude, it, it was just cracking me up. But like for the time, like it's such a '90s movie. But it was like it was so, it was still fun to watch now. But back then, it was just like that. All that dialogue was probably so cool to me as a kid. And yeah. as the, at, now, watching it now, it's like oh my god, it's just so hilarious. That it probably had you getting ready to be a storm chaser. As oh, like sure it's it like I want this to be my job. I'm, I'm going to sure be a storm did. chaser. No, there's an entire generation of meteorologists. That are that if you ask them, I think they've done like actual studies on that. I've seen that where like there's a large percentage of people who do weather related jobs, and it was all because they were inspired by Twister. Mm-hmm. Because that. that was what we all wanted to do. It's just we weren't, we didn't fall into the group of people who were just like completely inspired. <laughs> yeah. But it definitely inspired you to be like, that looks like fun. I want to yeah. be a storm chaser, even though no one knows what they do. Another yeah. thing about like then and now watching it like back then it made sense to me of like oh yeah they gotta beat this uh, th- this other group but as an adult i'm like wait there's just another rival storm chasing team that you guys regularly but <laughs> like, you're, you're constantly on the same roads as each other just side <laughs> by side like like wait a second it's obviously like that's what that's what makes the movie you know what i mean like there wouldn't be a movie if they didn't have that sort of conflict but like Look at that now. It's like, hold on a second. Are you telling me that you guys are constantly showing up at these same places? Trying to do the exact same experiment to see who could do it first? Right. Yeah. And who knows, man? I'm not a storm chaser. That might be it. There might be that might be the life. They might be at war with each other, flatten each other's tires and parking lots. Right. Yeah. There's there's definitely a lot. I yeah, that everything you just said, I totally agree with, but there's definitely a lot that I look at this movie now, still love it, still have a fun time, but I look at now at it now and like it through a different lens. Yeah. Um, this movie is a tragedy for Melissa as a character. Oh my she, God. She's just like a victim through, Dude. she's victimized by, <laughs> by Bill, by the entire group. Like how, how did she, how did she just get dragged along in all this she's in constant danger she's constantly screaming and crying and bill's just like oh honey it's okay (laughs) like what this woman should not be out here in these trucks you just put her in a truck with with a crazy old (laughs) philip seymour hoffman over here and just let her go yeah (laughs) snow and dusty he'll take care of you what my notes said one of my notes in bold just says melissa didn't deserve any of this because (laughs) she didn't she's like the sweetest nicest person yeah um she gets stuck with creepy dusty who's way too close to her the entire time every time you look in the background he's like dragging her around holding her hand you're just like what's happening he's like come here sweetheart there's this scene and, and this line from bill paxton where he's like honey, why don't you get us some cold drinks? And she goes and she comes back and she's like, hey, I got lemonade. And he's like, no, no, you take the truck. I'm going to go with my ex-wife. You know right. what I mean? It's just like, Melissa, she's just, what What, what did she do? She didn't right, just what, this. And, and at that point, like, why couldn't she just stay there? Right. Yeah. He, he like, could have he he just been like, hey, dangerous. I'm going to go. You go back right. to the hotel. Like, you don't have to keep following us. Yeah. No, most definitely. It's it's a tragic movie for her. She did not deserve any of it. She's constantly put in danger. Uh, she's just trying to ask questions and take an interest in her new husband's former life. And like people are 
kind of making fun of her, kind of not. And then like there's that one scene uh, when Joe and Bill kind of like dodged one of the tornadoes and they're having their moment. And she's like, you don't know how it feels when it skips over this house and skips over that house and hits yours. And he's like, is that what you thought happened? But like Melissa's listening to the whole thing on that radio. And he's like, somehow that's on. Yeah. He, He basically says to Joe, like, you got more to live for. You got me. And then they go back to her face and she's like almost crying. I was like, oh, Melissa, <laughs> why is everyone doing this to her? Yeah. And then yeah. eventually when she decides to leave, you just never see her again. Like, man, you you ruined this woman's life. Mm-hmm. But they made it so. so she was happy about it. Like, you know what? We knew this wasn't going to work. So it's OK that you're leaving me for your ex-wife. It's OK. Yeah. She even says. You know I'm what? Too sad about it. Yeah, I'm not even that upset about it. So what does that mean? So it's like, okay, I think you're. I think yeah. after a couple of years of therapy, from all this physical uh, storm violence that you've just endured, you'll probably be fine. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, but yeah. I, 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 get I it, understand. But it's, it's just, just, it's just an example of looking at it now differently. Like back then, I'm sure I was like, yeah, Melissa sucks. Yeah, get Helen out of Hunt. here. You belong to Joe. <laughs> we love Helen Hunt. All right, but now I'm just like, oh. Poor girl, that poor yeah. woman. Yeah, she got shit on the whole time and uh, didn't deserve any of it. No. Yeah, <laughs> no. I, I still don't, I want to know why he brought her there to begin with. They were just well, taking a road trip to get those papers signed, man. Yeah. Why? She, yeah, who knows why she actually came? In their mind, it was just going to get the, the papers. The, the I said the papers, the, papers. the divorce. <laughs> get those divorce papers signed real quick and get the hell out of there. But uh, didn't work out that way for old Joe. For old Melissa. That's what I meant. Melissa. It worked yeah. out for Joe. Yeah, she got what she wanted. Selfish bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, time to talk about food. <laughs> well, they go to. That's they, all I had in my notes. Yeah, they realize where does where does Aunt Meg live? Like w- Wakita or Wakita? Something with a W, yeah. They realize they're close to Wakita. Which is mm-hmm. where Joe is from, right? And her aunt lives there, so they go there to see uh, Aunt Meg because she makes really good country food. Food, 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 food. Still Probably one of the... the most quoted line of this movie, yes. uh, besides uh, "We've got cows." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still I... off and... Yeah, I think food I, has gone further. Like cows you, was a very '90s thing. Like I think that one stayed in the '90s. Food has kept going. Like I just saw someone with a food shirt on on some YouTube yeah. channel. I have clear memories of both of you saying food back and forth to each other, <laughs> like throughout the years growing up. You know what I mean? I'm sure. Like, I'm sure. Like, I still do it. What What year did this come out? '96. Okay, so we're in eighth grade. Yeah. You know what I mean? Going into freshmen. So, and I clearly remember you guys being like, food, food, food. <laughs> repeatedly. I don't know why that line, that delivery, just all of that is just like lives forever. Mm-hmm. Sure. Out of everything Philip Seymour Hoffman did with his career, that is the only thing I remember. It's probably his best role. <laughs> the, the man was in Capote. But... Yeah, I don't know. So... I mean, he won Oscars. I, I'm sure he won <laughs> Oscars, but he played dusty incredibly yeah he definitely yeah. seemed like he had the most more fun playing dusty i feel like every other one might have been a chore do you guys ever see something or along came polly with ben stiller and jennifer aniston i've never seen I'm... it in its entirety i've seen the basketball scene right and i've seen a couple other scenes with uh Phil i don't Simone. remember well he's in that movie he's in that movie as like ben stiller's best friend and just totally a fucking goofball, like comedy, like one of those that era comedy movies. That's what it is. And he totally is like by that time, he'd already established himself as a, you know, sought after good dramatic actor. And he's in this movie just cracking jokes and shit. And it was like, this is so crazy. He's so good at this. And then I read later, like that role was written for Jack Black. And then, but he couldn't do it. So they brought in Philip Seymour Hoffman and he'd like totally just had the, had had that aura about him is like man he could just do that because he wanted to uh it's hilarious but yeah he's he's a fantastic actor in this too he's food guy he's food that scene too just for some reason is one of the 
scenes that just feels good. It feels like a warm hug, like an old the, the dinner scene where all that food's coming out and like it all yeah. looked delicious, even though it was like fatty meats and eggs and gravies and shit. But I, I still remember thinking like that looks good. I want some of that. I, that I was thinking it last night when I watched the movie. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, I want me some of that food. But yeah, it's just having that like community, like the dialogue is all great. Like everyone's talking, but then you have people that are like, it's just a great shot scene as the camera's going around. You have, as you said, poor Melissa, who's sitting there like completely uncomfortable as everyone's talking and handing food. So there's just a lot of action going on and a lot of talking and like one liners and zingers and everyone's giving each other, you know, you just feel like you're part of like, like you said, a family. And you're just listening to everybody, and you're just like, like you said, it just feels so good to watch that scene. It just did it so well. Mm -hmm. Reminded me, my dad always talks about the story the first time he had dinner with my mom's family. And he's like, it was absolute chaos. He's like, there was 15 conversations going on. People are passing food. And I'm just sitting there trying to pay attention to what's going on. And he was like completely overwhelmed. So I was watching. That's kind of like like, what, that's kind of like what Melissa had to do. Oh yeah, it was. Just, it, that's <laughs> yeah. exactly what it was. It was like, oh my god, that's what my dad was doing. Whenever and like everyone else, it's just like clockwork. It's like normal to them. They're not. Yeah. They're just enjoying themselves. And yeah, but it, it is a really good scene. Yeah, it, it also it also reminded made me feel bad for her too that she was involved in that and she what was happening to her is what we do sometimes to people that I feel bad about in real life is like um, inside stories. That, oh yeah outsiders don't know what the hell we're talking about but we're all laughing and they're just like oh yeah 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 and it was kind of one of those things i try to remember not to do that to people but it's hard when you have friendships and relationships for years you want to do that yeah but like somebody's always going to be like i don't know what the hell they're talking about i'm just going to smile and laugh and that See, was but i thought they did a, i thought they did a good job of like she was asking questions because i mean the one story they told was like why do you call billy the extreme because they kept mm-hmm. calling him extreme. So, I mean, they told that story. Granted, that story kind of freaked her out. She's like, uh, he just, like, chucked a bottle into a hurricane <laughs> or a tornado naked. Okay. I don't know who this man is. Um, well, it seemed well, like they were trying to, you know, yeah, tell stories for her. A little bit. But, but I understand just, what you're saying. One more point about that that I just noticed that made me laugh is they were talking about tornadoes a little bit. That's where you learned what <laughs> F1, F2, <laughs> F3s are. And, like... They're talking about them all like, yeah, F3 is this, F3 is this, F4, oh, yeah, that's a bad one. And Melissa was like, what about an F5? And everyone was like. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole dinner table just froze like she said something bad. She's like, what? What about an F5? Yeah. Oh, we don't talk about f 5 <laughs> We're storm chasers, but we never say F5s. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was like they were all like, oh, she, she said F5. She said F5. She said it out loud. It's going to happen. Dude, it, it literally was just like if they could have put a record scratch in there, it would have fit in perfectly. Like, <laughs> right. that, that's the only, that was the only downside to that scene is right then and there where it's like, no, we don't, we don't say F5. Look, I'm sure Joe <laughs> knows what an F5 is and whatever. Right. She'll, she'll she wasn't even in the room. Right. right. Has anybody ever seen it? Only one of us. He looks up in the upstairs and sh- cut to Joe taking a shower. Right. Would have been better as if they, if they, said, if, they uh, if she said, "Has anyone seen an F 5 And Joe was there, and she just threw her plate on the ground and said, "And jumped at her." We don't talk about F fives. <laughs> you just said, didn't know, honey. I didn't know. Uh, poor an F five killed my father <laughs> on purpose because <laughs> he had to hold the door. He skipped my neighbor's house, skipped the other house, and killed my dad. It chose me. Don't you understand? It chose me. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm realizing that us watching this as an adult, we're just super uh, empathetic to, to to Melissa. You know what I mean? Man. Mm-hmm. She was just a tortured, regular person who didn't deserve all the bullshit. Not at all. Yeah, I understand why she was there from a story perspective. But yeah, as a human, she didn't deserve to be there. Yeah. It was very a lot more tragic as an adult than it was as a kid. Uh, another, another thought I had just while we're like just spitballing here, talking. Yeah, about we're one hundred percent spitballing. I've already ran out of script notes, so okay. <laughs> the um, the technology behind Dorothy is it stupid, or are those things just like? They treated them like they were these huge thing that took years and years to make, but then they're just these fragile little things that are on the back of the truck that if the truck 
if it dumps over, like, oh, it's over. You know what I mean? Like, it seemed like there should have been a better way of getting that up into the sky. And when they finally did realize how they could, oh, let's just cut these Pepsi cans into little wings. And uh, our Pepsi sponsorship of this movie has now been fulfilled to make them fly. (laughs) But, like, I don't know. I just found, like, the Dorothys to be... They didn't. They didn't think that they might fall over because of the tornado. So then, if they well, fall over, they're they're worthless. They meant they kind of they kind of mention where they thought they were going to work, and when they weren't, that's when they're like, "We realize they're too light. They need to be anchored." We they say that a couple times. So okay. I think they kind of try to fix that in the script where they say because they even tell uh, Jonas they're like, "You have to anchor it. It's not going to work. It's too light." And they were talking about how they're too light, which is why I think when they initially or when they eventually succeed it's because it's in the truck and the tornado takes the whole truck up and then it goes up in there they mentioned that it's too light that's what they they talk about it a couple times okay that being said that being said the perfection that they would have to achieve by cutting those aluminum cans to make those wings absolutely perfect to fly (laughs) i don't know but all right for me for 90s technology and and hollywood when that thing got sucked up into the tornado and those sensors started going yes. off, yes. she's like, "We're already getting data." And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I okay. Looking it up, there was real technology that the movie was based off of. It was something uh, for a project called Toto, which is probably where they got the Dorothy from. Awesome, but it was never done. Like there were a lot of problems to be able to make it work. So they kind of like took some ideas and some ideas that the NSSL was like playing with and ideas and concepts, but then they made it movie work, but never, there doesn't seem to be any track record of it actually working in real life. Oh, for me, it's just like, oh, these sensors get sucked up and they send signals back. Okay. It makes well, sense. They right. were saying there are a lot of problems of just trying to recover the probes after they get, picked out you know throwing in there to really get data back you know that's the thing maybe it's not sending data back in real time they'd have to get the the probes to get the data i mean yeah i'm not a scientist to know but i would imagine i mean i guess life (laughs) maybe scientist not that kind of scientist um but yeah i don't know batman's a scientist yeah put it on batman <laughs> um so there was something but yeah it was definitely movie technology there and yeah to, Just... to do the pop cans and give it each sensor wings for two giant ones that would have took them months but just yeah, like I get it it was like they had one shot left and it was the it was the oh shit moment i figured it out of bill paxton when they're at aunt meg's house and he sees her wind thing moving and it's mm-hmm. the hollywood moment of we I got to do. We got to come together as a team again to make this work. You know, right? I, like I just want to know where they got all the cans from. They were in the middle of, you know, Aunt Meg's house got torn down by a tornado. They saved her. She was fine. They saved the dog. They said the recycling plant down the street. He's lying. Dusty <laughs> just. <laughs> I'm a liar. Dust, <laughs> Dusty just drank a lot of Pepsi. Probably they want sure. you to assume. I got to wash down this food. I don't know. I it just food. It, it just kind of always seemed like. That's his life's work technology, and it was just so easily destroyed at first. And like the first one, he tried; it took him forever to open. When he was in the back of the cab, remember he climbed through the window, yeah. and it was like taking him forever. Like I'm almost got it, and he's flipping switches and pressing things. And then the second one, they just dropped it in the street, and he was like, bloop, 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 and fucking was done instantly. Like how come that one didn't take so long? Uh, it was all anyway. plot. I, was, I mean, there were so many moments like that, and there's so many different things, you know, of continuity errors. You know, when the at the end when they were driving and they drove through the house, which is still a badass stunt. Um, that was, and, and like I said, this movie has that great mix of practical and special yeah. effects um, for some of those things. But you know, and the 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 truck came and had the the I can't think of the that big arm swung into the windshield and put a hole in the windshield, and the hole was gone. Oh, just for continuity. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of con- you know, continuity error- errors, which were funny to find. But I know we talked about Melissa leaving already, but there's this scene where she's th- when she's still there. And I don't know why this is the prop they decided to use, but she's holding a gigantic beach umbrella yeah. over her head and it's getting sucked away from her. And I was like, who decided to give her a gigantic rainbow <laughs> beach umbrella? Dusty. Dude, like, where did it even come from? 
Right. Doesn't make any sense. There's just it's a not doing anything that were like cracking me up, and I was just like, "Oh my god, this is so great!" Though, um, yeah, Aunt Meg. I know we talked about her. She mm-hmm. I, she's like probably my favorite character in the whole thing. Um, Aunt Meg is cool, sweet and awesome, and she was hilarious after she got you know attacked by a tornado. Um, <laughs> that was a tornado got her. That that was an that was also another. They better save the dog moment. Oh yeah. T- it took too long to get that golden retriever out, and I was like, "You better not leave that dog in there." <laughs> and then, with, and then when he did come out with it, finally, like huge dog, nobody cared. I was like, "Someone care about the dog more." No, that was for us. Is Moe's. go get Moe's. get that dog, and then like the the house just collapsing behind him <laughs> a split second after he gets out. It was almost done in like the background. Like yeah. he's just he's just carrying this dog down this house that's collapsing in this giant stunt that we're, mm. that's not even in the it's not even in the foreground. Oh my god, it was great. Yeah, that was another one where they're like, we can't kill the dog. Now they would just the they would want that emotional weight, and the dog would have got stuck in the house. I don't know. Besides that, just a bunch of other fun shit. Carrie always death. I don't know. Kind of. Make sure not not makes you roll your eyes, but just like so that motherfucker can only get that close to the tornado. But these other people have been inside of them a hundred <laughs> times and they're not dead. Um, but when he gets too close, it sucks his truck up into the air and explodes him. I that was the F five. It was a sidewinder and it had shifted course, Don. I don't think you get it. Earlier in the movie, there was a tornado on top of Joe and Bill, <laughs> and they're under a bridge. Just hold on. Just holding on, even though at the end of this movie, the only way they can survive is strapping onto a pipe that's deep underground. But in that earlier scene, when one's right over their head, they only got to hold on to a couple logs. That wasn't an F five. That wasn't it an F five. It was only it an F two. No, the the that when they're underneath the bridge, the fact that the tornado is there and strong enough to pull their truck out, but not them. <laughs> right. Pull the truck out and pull the boards off the bridge and the nails that are holding them in. Yeah. Right. But not them. But not them. They just hold on as oh. as as Helen Hunt's like, I want to see it. And she's like crawling around, not holding on to stuff because she wants to touch the tornado. She'd have been as soon as she let go and said, "I want to see it." She'd been sucked out <laughs> yeah, of there, just like, like, like her dad, rag, like a rag doll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going. And she. <laughs> uh, so wait, you mentioned Jonas's death, where he's being warned, and he's like, "When are they going to help us? I'm turning it off." So it it would have been bad enough to, oh, my God, he got sucked up and then thrown down and they exploded. But right before they get sucked up, they go ahead and impale his driver who wanted to turn around and get away. I felt bad for that guy. Yeah. yeah. If anything, Jonas should have been impaled and then they right. could have lifted up and whatever. Right. But, like, yeah, dude, whoever had that stunt lined up, they were like, oh, no, we're doing it. It's like, yeah, but we're going to suck him up and throw, it, throw him down. He's going to explode. Right. No, no. We need to impale him with part right. of what I can only think is like some sort of electric tower or right. something. It was like metal framework, but yeah, totally yeah. impaled the dude. Well, and that it's guy like just wanted to go back. Right. And it's every every other scene in this movie where they're running, literally running next to a tornado to try to get away, and there's shit flying all over. <laughs> Nothing ever hits them. But the only person <laughs> who gets impaled in this is the guy in the truck who wants to not be doing what he's doing. Just like during that whole last scene where Bill and Joe are running from the F5, like on foot now because they have to, but it's close and shit's just whipping around. I was like, they would be dead instantly (laughs) just because there's things whipping around pieces of wood at 100 miles an hour. And then they get in that barn and it's going into the walls, like hitting like swords through wood. It's like, so none of that hit them. They don't have a scratch on them. They're just running, running through this fucking 100 mile of wind, not dying. Uh, I mean, it's the '90s. The '90s fucking blockbuster, of course. That's just gonna be unbelievable stuff. Yeah, but dude, I, I, don't know. I still lo- that scene you just mentioned. I still love the line, even when I saw it the other night, of when they're in that barn and all the metal is there. They first walk in and just see a bunch of like sickles and blades and things, and just the the line of "Who are these people?" still hits me, and I loved it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's such just this good little funny throwaway of like, oh, my God, who are these people? Like, why is there weaponry, basically? Well, what's funny is they're farmers. Yes, they would have that. I know. They would have all of that stuff hanging there. So, like, as a kid, I was like. (laughs) But, like, (laughs) 
but as an adult, I'm just like, no, they're just farmers. That's what's in barns. Yeah, but that many. Yeah, yeah I got there was it. a lot. <laughs> but it's still, yeah, it's one of those lines that you just know is, like I said, it gets you. Yeah, because it was like hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah. It was that '90s humor which I love? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was a good one. That was a good one. So I have to ask the question: Does anybody gonna go see Twisters? Here's the deal. My wife is a very big fan of Twister. She's a very big fan of Beetlejuice. So there's two sequels coming out that Beetlejuice really wants to see. <laughs> Beetle- I was gonna say wants to see Beetlejuices. <laughs> the Beetlejuices. Sorry. Oh, so I will be going to see Beetlejuice too for sure. And then she was like, I actually want to go see Twisters. And I was like, all all right. And she's like, you don't have to come. So I'll see. If I've got the time and schedules line up, I actually probably will go see Twisters. Yeah. I know that dude who's in it is like in everything now. I know he was in the Top Gun movie, but then I know there's a Netflix movie, I think, Hitman that he just was in. I haven't seen it. Um, I feel like I'm seeing that guy's face everywhere. I don't know if he's the new chiseled jaw everyman or what. Glenn Powell, yeah, he's he was just in that movie with uh, what's her name, Sydney Sweeney, that yeah. people went and saw oh, the rom com or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I think I've probably seen him in other stuff. I know I saw him in in Top Gun. That was yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Um, but and he was fine. So yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like when I first heard they were making a sequel to Twisters, I was just like, <laughs> what? Uh, Hollywood's tapped, and now it's kind of like, eh, if my wife wants to go see it, I'll probably. And now after seeing this again. I'm kind of hoping that if I see it, hey, let's hope there's some Easter eggs in here with little nods. They'll make me feel a little nostalgic and like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My thing is, will I see Twisters someday? Probably. Will I go to theaters? Probably not. And my biggest reasoning for that is I just don't trust the modern day blockbuster action movie to go to a movie theater to see i just don't sure. unless it's something like dune 2 but that's different because it's like sci-fi or i'll go see a marvel or a dc movie just because i'm that kind of guy who has to go see those but just like i didn't go see the what's the last movie that was just out with uh ryan gosling that i mean it looked good to me did i want to go see it Man? Go see, yeah, or yeah what was the movie he fall just guy? had recently yeah fall guy i said stuntman stuntman <laughs> No, it's Ball actually guy I didn't go Ball see. Guy. Okay. Um, Furiosa, yeah. I didn't go see. I just yeah. don't trust like modern action films to see in theaters, and I just will see them when they come out. And now movies come out so quick, like this. Yeah. Twisters will probably be on something in a month, yeah. but uh, I'm not saying I'll never see it. But am I going to go to the theater? I'm, I don't think so. Why? Well, and I guess you just probably said it, but it's crazy that like we have no faith in that movie being good. Like, I just know it's going to be loaded with special effects. It's going to be cheesy. It's not going to be fun. Like, I don't think they could recreate the fun of Twister. They haven't nothing, showed us the can. fun that the most fun that you've talked about was like the ensemble and camaraderie of the cast. Mm-hmm. Um, and they haven't shown any of that in the trailer. You know what I mean? So maybe yeah, it's just like, Glenn Powell doing his Glenn Powell thing, you right. know. But I, yeah, it's just nothing about it looks fun. I bet you I'd almost want to watch the trailer for Twister versus the trailer for Twisters and see how oh. different they are. Well, like I, like I said, you just can't recapture the same kind of energy that 90s blockbusters had in modern blockbusters. But for why? Some reason for me. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. You, <laughs> but here's you the thing. Do our, it. Are kids that are 12 through 14 seeing these and being blown away in the theaters? Maybe. Are you know they? I, mean? I, like, I don't know. You know, like uh, maybe they are. Like maybe it's just being an adult thing. Maybe it's because we're overcritical on things. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's like Jurassic Park, one of my favorite. 90s blockbusters went and saw Jurassic World in theaters let down like that that movie cost probably double what Jurassic Park cost and it's just you they can't capture the same magic energy and feeling and magic of those films so I I I hate to sound like a salty older person like shaking my fist at the new generation but it's just like I don't know until I'm proven wrong and something makes me feel different Mm -hmm. uh I just don't prioritize going to the movies like for summer blockbusters like i used to 
I don't know. I'm trying to think if it's a thing where it's like, uh, I'm trying to think of when I was a kid, is there a movie where my mom or dad were like, uh, I'm making this up now because I can't think of one, but if they're like, oh, what are you watching that? Oh, no, Casablanca. You got to watch one of these. This is a great movie. You know what I mean? I'm wondering <laughs> if it's something just like that, like just a generational thing. Where well, and where mm -hmm. to, to defend 90s movies and what we're talking about there, I can almost say that if we talk about Independence Day, Jurassic Park, Twister, our parents love those movies. Men in okay, Black. Yeah. You're right. You know, like, and they were our age when those movies came out. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, those movies are still the movies that my mom goes back and watches over and over and over again. She has, she has her ones from her childhood that she'll go back and watch, but I can guarantee you she watches more of these 90s ones than she does those. Maybe so it's it like some, something about those movies just spoiled them. You know what I mean? Because there wasn't anything like it before. Right. And now maybe we're just like maxed out with content being everywhere. Well, you know? that's a whole other. Yeah. That's part of that is part of it too, though. It it is. But yeah, I think just the like, special effects I overload. For two hours in a theater and hope that this retains my attention. It's like, right. oh, you better be good. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's not an easy task. No, I, I I agree. And then once again, this is a whole other discussion, but it's 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 crazy because I mean, realistically, 13 year old me should be super excited that Twister is getting a sequel. But oh yeah, if 40 if, year old me is like, meh. If 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 Helen Hunt was in the trailer and as cheesy as that sounds or something, if it was like a true sequel follow up with some of the characters or something. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess that's kind of like the Jurassic World thing when when we saw I still haven't seen it. You know, but when I saw that uh, Sam Neill was in it, I was like, holy crap. I got excited about it. So did Jess. She loves Jurassic Park. We both do. But we ended up not making it to the theater. I don't know if she eventually watched it on demand, but I still didn't see it because it was one of those things where I was scared I was going to be let down. So that's, that's even like the second or third one, isn't that's it? That's the third like, one. Is it? The, fir yeah. the first one is just Chris Pratt and. Uh, oh, where he's just training. The I saw that one where he trains the Raptors or whatever. I like, yeah, I like was the first one. It was it was the one with Sam Neill that I was most excited about because it was, that was like the this, third Jurassic this, World that they did. Okay. It's like but I, my after the second there. one where they were like auctioning off dinosaurs to terrorists, I was like, um, these movies can't ever be good again. Like, like, this sounds like an eighties movie. This yeah, my, sounds like somebody wrote this in eighty three. Yeah, but if and they, that's how like it you, played. Like you did say, if if they would have maybe inserted Helen Hunt into this movie as an older. Like she's been through and she's got to help this new generation of storm chasers get through this. That might pique my interest a little more. Right. Kind of like how, you know, you throw Jamie Lee Curtis into the new Halloween movie. That's why I was so excited about that yeah. when it kind of got rebooted. So if they would have done something like that, but just as it sits right now, like I said, I'm not saying it's going to be terrible, but I'm not like clamoring not to buy a ticket. Right. I hear that. I agree. Yeah. I'm not, I can't say I won't see it, but. Can't mm -hmm. say I won't just be like hype, <laughs> be like, oh my god, I want to go see Twisters, but chances are low. I don't remember the last time there was a movie out where I was like, I have to go see this opening weekend or the first week at least. Besides some of the MCU stuff or some of the Marvel stuff, you know what I mean? Like, Dune, mine was Dune, thought, maybe mine was Dune. Yeah, I, I waited for that on demand. I still haven't seen the second one. You know. Yeah. Um, I had the plans to go see Furiosa opening weekend. I was going to ask didn't. you. I, didn't, I still haven't seen it. Did you end up watching it? Not yet. That was, that was another thing where I was like, I was so bummed at the trailer because I thought, and a lot of people shit on Fury Road. I, I thought it was awesome. Um, the practical effects and how good it looked. And then watching the trailer for Furiosa and it was like, it's all CGI. Everything's mm. CGI. And I was just kind of let down and didn't feel like going to see it. Modern movies, boys. Modern movies. Yeah. Modern movies. And that's why we go back and talk about the classics, the goodies. And we got quite a few goodies coming up this month as we prepare for Deadpool and Wolverine. I know we've been talking about watching some Deadpool 1, 2, and possibly Logan. So we definitely have some more oldies but goodies. And that's not even going back to the 90s. That's somewhat, you know, early aughts or late aughts or whatever year. I don't remember what year those movies came out. 2010. Yeah, that's, that's on the docket. That's on the docket to do. On this. the docket. So we are going to watch some oldies but goodies and talk about it. And if you want us to watch anything oldie but goodie or newie and 
goody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, make sure you hit us up at raisethegeek at gmail.com or across social media at raised a geek. We are everywhere, so come find us, rate and review the show. We're looking for those five stars. Help get the word out for Raise the Geek. Any final thoughts on Twister or just final thoughts in general? Tony, I want to thank you for hanging out with us again. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Always enjoy it. Always a good time catching up with you guys and talking movies or games or geek stuff. Sure. Yeah, yeah man. I don't know. Twister, final final verdict for me. It's still a fun time. Like it's yeah. It's a movie that I just remember the hype machine then. And it still holds up in a way. Is it cheesy? Sure. Is the story simple? Yeah. Is the dialogue bad sometimes? Yeah. But it's just fun. It's yep. just a fun. It's, it's a, a fun two hours of just sitting. And I was engaged the whole time still. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely a good time. Glad I watched it. So let us, like Chris said, let us know what you guys still think of that movie, if it was fun or whatever. And, uh, yeah, man, maybe hope hoping Twisters will be OK when I finally see it someday. Yep, that sounds good. Well, I guess then that's going to do it for us this week. So for Race the Geek, I'm Chris. And I'm Don. And I'm Tony. And thanks for checking out the show. Where geek is always speak.